Hello, everyone, and welcome to P Transformers for your listening pleasure. Uh, we are recording today, uh, pre-recording because it won't be available tomorrow night. Um, and we've also been having uh, several issues uh, with uh, the hardware and the connection whenever we broadcast live. So until we are sure we can provide a a smooth streaming episode. We're going to try to limit our live episodes for the time being. Uh, we do plan on bringing them back uh, down the road, but it's just going to take a little time to get uh, uh, everything back in order. But as such, uh, I am Deron Land, aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Rick Alvarez. Can I get a uh, number two meal, please? Uh, the two cheeseburgers without mustard. I'll take a large diet, a French fry, and I would like a hash brown. Well, could you also use a towel for your lap for the hot coffee that you spilled in it? Uh, yes, tonight, uh, since we're recording and there's actually daylight out, uh, I'm not drinking my usual um, Jack and Coke. I'm drinking uh, coffee. The other elixir of the gods, yeah. and I was nice enough to spill some on my Daddy, on my I genitals. <laughs> and speaking of Jack, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> See, I am a master of segues. <laughs> uh, Jack Rudder. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Who is wearing a hoodie? It must be cold where you're at. Yeah, it's like sixty degrees outside, and we have the AC crank for some. Stupid reason. Yeah, it's sixty degrees here too. Oh, I'd, which is nice. I like it. I'd love to have 60 degrees here. It's been like in the 80s and stuff. But anyway, uh, that voice that you heard uh, is Sergio. Hey everybody. I'm back. <laughs> back. Um, also, check out our sponsors, CapturePrey.com. Great toys, great prices, great service. CapturePrey.com, where you can save even more with free domestic shipping on orders of $150 or more. CapturePrey.com. Great toys, great prices, great service. Also, check out Mega Toy Fan. You can find Mega Toy Fan at all the popular robot and toy conventions year round. Maximize your collection while minimizing your costs with Mega Toy Fan. You can find Mega Toy Fan at uh, TFCon as well as on Facebook. Just search out Mega Toy Fan and you will find him. Uh, also, uh, also joining us today is uh, Madeline Alvarez. <laughs> Uh, Maddie, what do you got there? You got eHobby, Blue, Jinrai, Optimus. I just sent painted for mine today. And this thing. I don't know what that's called. She's got that. <laughs> Go play. Have fun. Throw them against the wall. Break them. <laughs> I, I let my kids play with all the new stuff. And they, they've got their own selection of vintage toys that they can they can trash. Also, check out uh, Ripped Apparel. You can uh, find great t-shirts at Ripped Apparel. Uh, all, all the great mishmashes, like, uh, especially ones that involve Transformers. Uh, and on checkout, be sure to enter the promo code TFYLPPOD, and you will save 10% on your order at Ripped Apparel. Also, if you love what we do here on TFYLP, check us out down there at patreon.com slash TFYLP. And... Uh, Help us out each month, uh, help upgrade our equipment, help uh, keep our server fa uh, fees paid and all that stuff. Uh, and we appreciate all the people that has continued to support us uh, as we continue on. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, you know, this figure came out so long ago, I, I'm having a hard time remembering how to transform this thing. Really? That's how long it's... 50th use of the mold. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's been a while since I... All my stuff is still in storage. Which uh, <clears throat> release is that? This is the... I think this is E-Hobby, maybe? Yeah, it's the yeah. latest release. This is... Oh, the, Blue, okay. Blue Jinrai with some nice chrome on them. Hmm. It is pretty in those, uh, those colors. You know, and well, even though kibble aside, I always love that mold. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, you know, I wasn't sure I wanted to get this, but just because it's so expensive. For this was a hundred and nine dollars for a mold that I have like twenty different versions of, mm -hmm. plus an oversized one. I mean, just because it's blue. Yeah, that's all. 
It's blue. It's blue. That's yeah. That's it. Pretty yeah, colors. Pretty colors. Uh, well, we're going to have uh, a somewhat short episode tonight uh, because uh, kind of limited on time right now. But um, there are some things that we've we've actually been talking along these lines a lot lately, um, and I think it's really important because uh, as Transformer fans, most of us are collectors of the toys, and uh, we go through uh, different. Uh, um, times in our lives, and I'm, I'm hearing some feedback. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, uh, but uh, we go th- go through different times in our life and, and phases as, as collectors. Uh, we go from, you know, getting just a few figures to uh, got to have them all, collect everything, and then you you scale back, and then you and you buy more, and then you scale back some more. Um, it's a, it's an ebb and flow, uh, as you go as a collector. Uh, some people, uh, like myself, you know, I've, I've spoke, spoken recently how I'm trying to reduce my collection and I'm hopefully within a year, year and a half, uh, uh, time frame, get it down to where I'm not as actively collecting new stuff as, uh, as I am now or, or I have been. Uh, I'm in the process now of trying to clear, uh, clean out all my pre-orders, uh, but you know, eventually I want to get to a point where my collection is finite, and um, that's 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 a point where I want to be in my life. Uh, Sergio brought this up; uh, uh, he's had some thoughts on uh, along these lines lately, as have Jack. Um, and you know, since you brought this up, uh, Sergio, I figured. Uh, uh, I'd hand it over to you for uh, for a few minutes and tell us your thoughts on it. Uh, yeah, so about two, three weeks ago, I got laid off. And so that really put my spending on a halt, and I had to choose my money wisely. And so uh, I actually went to an interview yesterday, and uh, I got hired. Oh, congratulations. But, um, during that time of unemployment. Or, or, do you have any experience pole dancing? <laughs> yes, apply within. <laughs> I uh, between in, in those two to three weeks that I had, uh, the entire time I, I just spent at home. And so, uh, one day I was just looking at my collection, and I was thinking to myself, like, just <laughs> the one thing you shouldn't do, and the amount of money that I spent on it. Uh. <laughs> and my spending habits for the past couple of years has been exactly what the older collectors have warned me about and that's being a completist where I would literally buy everything that came out anything that I saw I would buy yep. and that was where my downfall began because I started realizing that I started spending on things that I didn't really enjoy and I just didn't feel like the the stuff that I had was making me as happy as it should be and so I've decided that I'm not going to be doing that anymore I'm just going to be very picky I'm probably just going to stick to Masterpiece and uh, Chug because I've completely sold off my Prime figures about a year ago. I had a complete set of the show cast, including the breakdown from Japan, and I sold everything just because they were in storage and I felt like they didn't fit into my collection aesthetic. And the same thing happened when I started to sell off my entire Beast Wars collection. As much as I like Beast Wars, I wanted to stick to that G1 aesthetic. And so slowly, I'm going to be sticking to that. Uh, I think for now, the Bayformer stuff is going to stay for now. But don't be surprised if that goes away in the future as well. But I feel like I'm not the only one, too, because I've been reading a lot. You know, you already began this process. And a lot of people on various Transformers groups and uh, boards have already begun, oh, I only collect Masterpiece, or I only collect this one specific line. Just because I think there's so much product out right now. Absolutely. Not only are we being yeah. overwhelmed, there's something for everybody. You know, if you don't if you don't have the money for Masterpiece, but you want G1, you can get classics. Well, I think it also is added to by the fact that there's such a glut of third-party add-on, uh, I mean, third-party uh, options too in addition to the official i mean we got so many so much uh stuff from the official lines uh and that's not a bad thing but 
at the same time, it can be rather overwhelming to someone, like you said, who is a completionist. Uh, you know, I mean, at one time I was there, you know, one, uh, as, whenever I began as an adult collector, uh, and I, I had everything, both loose and sealed, from the Fox Kids repaint Beast Wars all the way up through Universe, want to say 1.0, maybe 2.0 including store exclusives. I mean, if it came out and had a Transformers, uh, you know, banner on it, I bought it. And it, even on a limited income at the time, you know, I, I was like, I was making ends meet, but at the same time, I wasn't getting anywhere either. Yeah. And, and see, that's, that's what I started thinking as well, because something that you said really stuck with me. And uh, following up on what you just said, even though I'm not, you know, the world's richest man by any means, the things that I would sacrifice just so that I could buy these things, I would limit myself from having fun with non-transformer things. Mm -hmm. And what you said a couple shows ago about you really no longer wanting to go to conventions, how you felt like you've kind of run your course with that. I, every year, my vacation is to go to a, a Transformers convention. And I started thinking, I was like, you know, one year it would be nice to go on a vacation that doesn't have to do with toys. Yes. It'd be nice to go visit, you know, a place because I want to go visit it, not because there's a toy convention in town and, oh, it happens to be here. Yeah. And so I just feel like by slowing down on my collection and not spending like 90% of my income on it, I'll be able to do a lot more non-transformer things and really, you know, enjoy stuff outside of the hobby just because I've been so drowned in it. For well, the past it's, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things that I think – Pretty much every collector uh, falls into at one point or another. Uh, you know, at, at one point, uh, you know, managing what you're spending on the on, on the hobby uh, versus what you really, you know, other things that you want to do. Your hobby sometimes drowns out a lot of things, uh, mm -hmm. and it's and it and it's not necessarily a bad thing because you're still spending money on on something that you enjoy. But uh, it can also detract from the joy whenever you're spending money on something that um, can uh, that that you actually regret down the road because oh well I can't do X because I spent money on Y you know mm -hmm. and uh, you know you know there are, there are times whenever. I know you know managing money is 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 a large part of this, but at the same time, uh, you know my hindsight is always twenty twenty. You know you can spend money on something other, and you know as you're spending the money, and even maybe shortly thereafter, uh, you know you're fine. You know you, you don't regret spending uh, that money, but then something crops up. That's whenever you regret the spending. Yeah, and I figured I'm at the time to where I can do this without a ton of regret. You know, it's like I'm turning 21 next week. I'm in, about to enter my last year of college. I think now is the time where if I want to do something, I can do it now before, you know, I have to start looking for a full-time job and I have to start looking for, you know, my own place to live and all this other responsibility. If well, collecting is going to be there forever, you know, the hobby is going to be there. It's not going to go anywhere. And so I, if I sell I, I, off I, my Beast Wars stuff now, and let's say in a year or two, hey, I really want those back. I can go back and get them. And I and and that's that's a good point too. And I actually envy envy uh, you and Jack uh, to the uh, to the point where you know I'm sure neither of you pay rent, or if you do, you uh, you don't pay that much to your parents, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so you don't have that huge uh, outflow of cash from your incomes. Um, and you know, you've got a lot of responsibility that is not on your shoulders right now. And then whenever you get out on your own and you're having to support yourself, pay your rent, pay your utilities, you know, uh, food and all that stuff. And then, you know, you're, you're looking at all these toys that you want to buy and places that you want to go. And you're like, you're reaching into your pocket and pulling out pocket lint <laughs> because yeah. you've, you've Every spent time. it. Yeah. Well, well, it's even worse. So once you have all those added ex expenses, you know, yeah. uh, so, you know, instead of going and buying five or six new toys, you might uh, be relegated to buying one new toy. 
uh, turbo. and uh, oh, those and, tiny turbo changers. Yeah, you know, I mean, you you start relishing in the Legends class, you know. Yeah, but yeah, and that, it was a huge advice for you know older collectors like yourself that everybody told me. You know, when you first start off, you're gonna want to buy everything, and that's true. You know, because right now, like you mentioned, I don't have that much financial responsibility. So I was spending my money left and right on things I didn't even need. Sometimes I'd buy doubles of things without even knowing it. Like it wouldn't get to the point where it started getting bad. Or I would I had like a pile over here in the corner of stuff that I haven't even opened or have the space to display. And so uh, I lost my astro train of thought. Mm-hmm. It transformed <laughs> but and flew off into space. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was just like like I knew I needed to slow down, especially like I mentioned, I'm about to graduate. Of a lot of responsibilities about to fall on me, I think now is the perfect time to start keep slowing down and you know maybe getting used to only getting a couple things here and there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also uh, good to get into the mindset, you know, and and that's why I like uh, this episode where we have the older collectors like Rick and myself, uh, and then the younger collectors like you and Jack, um, you know, that can we can help you know, you graduate. And, and I, I know sometimes there's thoughts of, you know, getting out entirely, you know, because uh, let's, let's face it. Sometimes it can be a very daunting thing. Uh, being a collector, you know, you're like, Oh my gosh. You know, it's like, I'm, I've got all these figures, you know, and, and I even get to the point too. It's like, what am I doing? You know? Uh, but, in the end, I still enjoy the line. I still love the toys, and I love the characters. Uh, they are, uh, they are, and have been for many, 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 many years, a huge part of my life, and I never want that to change. Um, however, I do want to be able to enjoy other things and still enjoy Transformers. So that doesn't mean, you know, even whenever I say that I want to be done, uh, I, I want to be done as far as collecting all the mainline stuff, you know, and, and, uh, you know, all the, all the, all the characters, like completing all the 85, 84, 85 Autobot masterpiece characters. I've got to the point now where I'm like, I don't need grapple. I don't need, you know, uh, a, a wind charger, you know, what have you, you know, it's like, I want some of the main characters that I liked and I'll be happy with it. You know, mm-hmm. and it's getting to a, a point where you are happy with your collections. And that's another point that I want to talk about on this episode is you don't have to have a huge collection to enjoy your hobby. You know, uh, and, and at one time, uh, I was, I mean, I, I know Rick will probably laugh about this because I had, <laughs> uh, I had, uh, I had, somewhere between two and 3,000 figures, you know, I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to lean it as, uh, more toward 2,000, but, you know, that that's that's quite a lot of figures. And whenever you live in a small efficiency apartment like I did at the time, and literally I had 15 or 16 uh, big plastic totes full of stuff that I just couldn't display, and they were stacked up, you know, in in different places in the sufficiency apartment i'm like i have too damn much stuff you know it's i think uh and i've said this uh, on on other collection oriented uh, episodes before where in my opinion a smaller collection allows you to um enjoy certain things on a on a more focused basis you know, I mean, you can, you know, you don't, I mean, the, there's less uh, instances of, oh, damn, I forgot I even had this toy, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and I've been there, I've been there, I've, I've actually went and bought toys forgetting that I even already owned it, you know, and mm-hmm. now that I've got a smaller collection, I know what I have, and I, I don't, I don't sit there and go, oh, gosh, do I already have this? You know, I don't have that problem anymore because it's smaller, more manageable. Uh, Rick, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I've got I've got quite an opinion, quite a story to share. Um, however, um, let me start with something with an observation that I've noticed. There are the collectors 
who get married and um, and whatever the reason is, they say I don't know if you guys someone is someone is angry. Someone is super cranky right now. Hang on two seconds. <laughs> go, go, go. Someone is angry. <laughs> the not the joystick. The joystick. All right, Maddie, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? Uh oh. I say no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't he get said, married at the trap. All right, so there's a uh, trap. Married, and then for whatever reason, they sell their collection. He, oh, I have to pay for my wedding. Oh, my wife wants the house. Uh, or uh, we have this expense. And those are the guys that get out of it entirely. Yeah. And I Exter- told myself... I'm external gonna- influences. Yeah, I said, I'm never going to be that guy. I'll collect for as long as I want to collect. And everyone else is just going to have to deal with that. Luckily, I, I found the right uh, person to deal with that. Um, I'm the type of collector who... I'm an older collector. So I actually grew up with G1. I'm older than G1, 38 and Young when I was in high school, I was working two jobs. Um, I was working my after-school job at the supermarket, and then every weekend, uh, every Sunday, I would work uh, at the collectible toy store called Play With This. And there wasn't a whole lot of product at that time. Beast Wars was out, and that was it. So back then, it allowed me to take all the money... I was earning, and again, I didn't have any overhead. I was in high school, and I could just funnel it into Transformers, into toys. And this was like when eBay was starting. You know, I got my sealed Overlord for three hundred bucks back in the day. I got my Dino King for four hundred bucks. Uh, I got a sealed. Uh, hi, hi. How are you? Okay. I'm happy camper. I got. I got a sealed. Okay. Okay. I got a sealed uh, Star Saber for 125 bucks. So this is the this was the time period where things weren't astronomical. And stop hitting me. Almost sounds like a, something sounds like a Dononomic story. You know? <laughs> come back to me. <laughs> come back. Well, I'll finish my thought in a second. Okay. I'll turn it over to Jack for right now. Okay. <laughs> well. Like Sergio said, it's like there's some things it's like you just really don't want anymore. And I kind of had that too to where I pretty much sold uh, half of my Prime collection now and it's down to cast members. But I'm honestly thinking about selling that part off and just maybe ditching Prime completely. But I'm undecided because mainly, as good as the show it was, I just never really cared much for the toys. And if I got some of them, Meh. I guess I was happy, you know. You never have, you know, that full satisfaction until um, you really get a lot more. If, and I just, if you keep any prime toys, keep the uh, the dead end figure because that that scre- that green screaming face is like the most win of any transformer I've seen. <laughs> Hang on, but yeah. Um, then pretty much the only lines I really care about is a little bit of Masterpiece. I wouldn't mind getting a few more. And I wouldn't be, you know, kicking myself in the butt if I sold a couple. I mean, but then pretty much the main lines that I would really, really like to keep would be Unicron Trilogy. Seeing how that was my G1, you know, that's how I got into the whole line. Um, Then Chug, pretty much... Or that G1 aesthetic. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. I wouldn't mind selling Movieverse because that was the second G1 to me. That was pretty much Beast Wars because that was the second line I got into. Um, I wouldn't mind selling that. I just have it just to have it. Pretty much, like I said, the only line I care about was Chug, which is the middle shelf, top of the bookcases, and that's... And, I wouldn't... And- that's 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 something too that you mention is is that you get in the mindset as a collector of you get things 
just to have it. Yes. And uh, I, trying to determine what those things are in your collection is what do I have that I have just to have? Yeah. And um, because whenever you buy things, uh, it doesn't, it tends to not necessarily fall into that category as you're buying it. You know, it's like, because uh, generally it will, for me, I know whenever I buy something, I buy it because I want it. I really want it. Yeah. I like the way it looks and everything. And <laughs> Rick dropped off. Um, but whenever, uh, whenever I buy something and then after the fact, I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, and I think I mentioned this on, on an episode, uh, a, a few episodes ago, whenever I decided to, to actually start downsizing my collection, I bought the fans toy spin drift. C mm -hmm. uh, the sea spray, the third party sea spray, absolutely phenomenal toy. I loved it. It's a great little toy, uh, you know. And, I, and it's so in so much is that I don't regret buying the toy. I don't regret it uh, that much. But sea spray is one of those ancillary characters that I, I, I don't necessarily need to have i don't have that much a connection to the character i love the g1 toy uh he was so super simplistic and you could transform it in like less than a second uh mm -hmm. but um i i went to put him on the shelf and it's just this sudden realization that 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 hit me like a ton of bricks and like why am i doing this why do I have this toy? Why does this toy need to be, or why does this character need to be represented in my collection when I don't really care all that much about it? You know, uh, and then I and then I stood back and I and and I saw another character and another character, and I'm like, holy crap! I have all these representations of characters that I don't necessarily care about. You know. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, why do I have this? And then you start reevaluating yourself. Uh, and you know, that goes along with the theme that whenever we, every time we've talked about this lately is reevaluation. Uh, I know we bring this up so much, but this is a, uh, as Sergio pointed out, a hot topic, um, uh, in the Transformers fandom. A lot of people are going through this. You know, what do I want to keep? What do I want to sell? Uh, you know, uh, why should? Why am I selling? You know, am I getting out completely? Uh, you know, and I don't recommend that really for any fan. If you are a, a, a real fan of the, of the line and everything, you don't really want, ever want to really stop. Like, yeah. like, like, like I said earlier, I don't really want to stop. It's just that I don't want to have to, I don't want to, and I don't, uh, and I was, uh, and that's that's another thing too. I don't want to have to, but I don't want to buy a toy every month. You know, it may go, I may go two or three months without buying a toy, but you know, there might be a toy that comes out. I'm like, I've really got to mm -hmm. have that. You know, it, it's got to have that fans toys uh, terminus giganticus feel to it. You know, it's like it's like you see it and you're like, I have to have that. You know, even if it's. And that's one of those where it's not necessarily a character I absolutely love. But what happened? Uh, it showed him log off, and it's he's still popping up. He just posted in the uh, group chat. It goes, "It's the apocalypse. I'm home alone with her." And he posts a video of her just breaking down. And okay. <laughs> Because this is what happens when we try to do the podcast during the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you can't help it. Um, yeah. But um, being a parent is going to suck. Yes. But, you know, and I think Rick brought up a, a good point there, too, is a lot of people uh, get out of the hobby for external influences. You know, uh, you have a, a loved one, whether it be a girlfriend or a wife, uh, that doesn't necessarily get your hobby. And I've been in that position before. Uh, unfortunately not in that position right now. Uh, but, um, I've been in that position where, uh, you know, they, whenever you first get together, they're like, Oh, that's cute. I like that. I like that aspect about you, you know? Um, 
in that you know they they know you're a toy collector but then once you get deeper into the relationship they start finding out how much a part of your life this hobby is Mm -hmm. and they almost take a a a jealousy to it it's like they want that time and everything and even though that you might be giving them the proper time uh you know they they feel that oh that's such a stupid waste of time and they start pressuring you to uh, to either decrease it or get out of it altogether. Uh, yep. Start selling uh, stel- uh, selling your stuff. They're worth so much money, uh, you know. And sometimes their their view of how much it's actually worth is a lot more than what it really is. Yeah. Uh, but you know they 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 start wanting you to sell it so you can pay for a wedding, like you said, uh, pay for a house, pay for a, a new car, and. You know, quite frankly, some of us have collections that are large enough that could probably do that. Uh, you know, I know several people that if they sold everything in their collection, they could probably go buy a nice Lambo or a, or a, <laughs> a really nice house. You know, and 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 that's serious. Daniel, that, I can get a mid-sized Toyota. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> mid-sized Toyota. Um, a little GMC Jimmy. And and you know, like I said, I've. I, I know what that's like too. I've I've actually sold off a lot of toys and bought entire vehicles before, you know. Uh, so uh, that that's actually cool. And and whenever I talk to people and they talked about uh, talk to me about my hobby, uh, and they're like, well, why do you do it? And I'm like, well, it's fun and everything. And they're like, well, aren't you wasting money on this stuff? And and I'm like, well, no, you know, mm-hmm. because if I if I really need the money, I can sell it. And I've actually bought two vehicles. <laughs> from the sale of toys and they're like what you know (laughs) yeah i mean when i was unemployed i for those two three weeks where i had bills coming up and you know just other things that you know i need money to survive yeah when i was selling toys it's like oh it's like you know i I just need like a hundred or two hundred bucks and i'll be fine i can literally sell one toy and make that yep you know, and, and that was, it was actually very helpful when I sold off a couple things because not only were they going to collectors who I knew would enjoy them as opposed to being in storage in my house, mm-hmm. but, you know, the money that I needed, I got it quick. It was fast money. Within a couple hours of posting my post, I had all the money I needed, paid off when I needed to pay, and I still had some extra left over for whatever else I needed. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it, it's like last, uh, or earlier this year, whenever I had a medical uh, situation and I was out of work for nearly two months. Yeah. And I had, uh, you know, I sold some things that I didn't want to sell, Generations Metroplex. Uh, but, you know, n- necessities, you know, came first. You know, I had bills I needed to pay. And, I finally sold Generations Metroplex, got got well over two hundred dollars for it, and that took care of uh, some bills, you know, because you know I had enough that you know if I was out of work for uh, for two or three weeks, I would have been fine. But I was out beyond that, and you know my insurance, uh, I, I was I'm, I was still relatively new to my job, so. You know, the, the disability insurance was not as much as it normally would have been had I been there, say, several years. So I had to resort to selling things to, uh, to, to make ends meet. And that in and of itself is not wrong because in the end, it is, you've always got to keep that perspective. It's just toys. You, yep. know, they're, uh, you know, they're there for your enjoyment. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not sitting here saying, you know, sell something that is near and dear to your heart, you know, uh, if at all possible. If it's a, if it's your favorite figure and it's worth a lot of money, uh, you know, if if you're getting ready in, in danger of losing your home and it could save you, then do it. But if if you can avoid getting rid of it, then then do so. Sell so- something else that will get you the money. Yeah, um, yeah. when I was selling stuff. Uh, if I need to sell something for money, like, oh, crap, I need money, I try to pick something that is worth a nice chunk but won't be hard to reacquire later on. You know, yeah. like, like a Masterpiece figure, they're reissuing those things left and right, but they still, they're easily 100 bucks. You know, pick one, nine times out of ten, it's going to be worth 100 bucks at least. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to if I went out and started to sell all my BotCon stuff that took me couple months to find just one listing on ebay then that would be harder to get back if yeah. i ever want to get it back 
Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is uh, if you ever intend to reacquire something, uh, then that's whenever you also want to uh, consider uh, or reconsider selling it. You know, because if it's going to be extremely, if you intend to reacquire it and it's going to be extremely difficult to replace, then you know maybe move on to something that will be would be easier to replace. Because um, see, there's like say the Age of Extinction figures. I wouldn't mind selling because I know I can get back. But say it's something, you know, like the Ultimate Movie Edition Optimus Prime. This thing is going to be a pain in the ass to get back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's something you would not want to. So, yeah, like Durant said, find something smaller, like, you know, cheap deluxe that well, you got for three bucks. Well, I mean, you, there, are, there are things that, that, have, that have worth, you know, uh, and, and, you know, we, I, I, I'm saying this knowing full well that, that, not every t every person is selling simply because they need the money you know um you know it's like for for me right now it's not that i need the money it's just that i um and and lately i've actually been selling things and then re repurposing it back into the collection uh because you know like i said i've got a sizable pre-order list uh that that is that is out there and i'm trying to clean that out so i can get to a point where uh, once, like, Power of the Primes comes out, I can pick up the select figures out of that line that I want. And then, you know, I won't have any pre-orders uh, due. I won't have anything that's out on retail that I want. I can get to a point where, as, you know, figures are announced and released, uh, you know, I, I see it. I'm like, that's something I really, really need, you know. Uh, and it may, sometimes it may go six months you know before I've, I've, I, I come across that um, but I've, uh, there, there's another point here and uh, that, uh, that I want to talk about uh, that Sergio mentioned uh, you know people downsizing their collections to a smaller collection uh, and being happy uh, with a smaller collection and you know I've I've done this uh, several years ago and I've gotten I think as much, as many as 500 figures and you know in the grand scheme of things compared to a lot of collectors uh, 500 figures is not a lot of toys uh, <laughs> you know uh, it is a lot to some uh, but you know uh, and I think right now I'm probably down to around three or four now yeah it's about me uh, so not uh, three or four hundred not three or four <laughs> figures um, yeah. As and you know, as you and, and there are some people that literally have much smaller collections. They may fit in one shelf or one one detolf, um, and there's no shame in that. You know, it is a it is still a collection. It's still something that you enjoy, and uh, quite frankly, the less that you have, the more that you can enjoy each individual figure. Yep. So what happened to me when I started collecting is, you know, I didn't have much, obviously. I just wanted to start off with what I really wanted, which at the time was Armada. So I wanted, you know, Megatron, the tank, because my friend had them and I wanted them so bad. And, you know, by the when I just, you know, time I actually got them, I'm like, pretty cool. Enjoyed them for like two hours, two, three hours straight. And I had Optimus Prime, you know, that whole power base thing. And with the smaller collections, like Duran said, you can enjoy them more, and it's just, you know, you can kind of get that more sentiment value out of them, yeah. pretty much. Well, you get to the point where, if you get to the point where you, you look at toys, certain toys in your collection, and you're like, when did I last touch that toy? Or when did I last, uh, you know, get that toy off the shelf mess with it maybe transform it you know uh or in my case uh, transform it and for photograph it or something uh you know and if you get to the point where you're like i don't remember the last time i messed with that toy you know <laughs> that yeah. to, to me that's kind of concerning and and everything uh, sergio do you have a thought on that i think you're muted there you go. Sorry, um, I don't really mess with myself all too often. 
But no, yeah, like what you're saying, you know, more than as long as you have two or more figures at the collection, it does not matter if it's two or two thousand. As long as you have more than one, it's a collection. Um, and I think, really, at the end of the, at the end of the day, you have to realize that everybody's collection and collect, collecting habits are different, and that's what makes the hobby so great. Is that everybody's collection is unique? Because if we all had the same things, it'd be boring. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, by everybody having their own unique collection, it speaks so much about themselves as a person and their personality. And so, you know, when I first started, my impression was that by having a large collection, it'll make me happy. And it ended up not to. And somebody's happy. <laughs> See, at least, well, at least it's not yelling. What is that noise? I think that was the birds. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's sunny outside, so we decided to sing. It's the sing that's a serenade. Uh, uh, at least it's not a child... Uh... You know. Yeah, at least it's happy. <laughs> <laughs> the apocalypse. <laughs> All right, so, but yeah, so I thought having a large collection would make me happy, and as, as time go- went on, I think a more medium-sized collection is what will suit me. You know, and well, well, I hope not to be able to change that again once I move out, get my own home, and everything. Well, when I got a lot more, stuff, and I'll be able to be like, you know what, maybe a large collection is pretty cool. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if you was able to watch the live uh, live stream that I did on the uh, Facebook group here a week or so ago, uh, and I actually mentioned I saw your recent post there, and I mentioned in it, and and, and this is a little part of advice as an older collector, I, I, I give you, and um, you will go through different phases in your in your hobby as a collector in, in your lifetime, and. Um, you know, there are times where you will you will literally want everything, like you have been going through. Uh, and then once you start getting to a different phase or a different part of your life where, uh, you know, space is an issue, money is an issue or something, you will start reevaluating that. It's totally normal. You know, don't sit there and go, oh, my God, I just need to stop this and everything. It, the, you're, you're going to go through different different phases and there's going to be lines that don't appeal to you and then there's going to be lines that there you're going to be like oh my god i do have to have every one of these <laughs> um you know and then you know it's like and 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 this is something that that i was actually talking uh, with uh, insane galvatron about uh here here the other day you know i can different i can remember back whenever uh, certain toy lines uh, in Transformers came out, and we we as a collecting community was buying these toys. Uh, alternators, for example, we're like, I, I just don't see toys getting better than the, uh, the Transformers getting better than this. You know, I, uh, how are they going to get better than this? <laughs> and then Masterpiece comes along. You know, the uh, the new new line of Masterpiece, and right now a lot of people are saying, how can they get better than this? You know, there's no way that we're going to get better G- uh, versions of G1 characters than this. I guarantee mm-hmm. you, within 10 years, there will be something that will supplant that. Mm-hmm. And nobody will care about the current masterpieces. And that's just the way it is. It's, uh, you know, I don't know how many lines have come and gone in Transformers where, uh, you know, you have this rise and fall in popularity and in, uh, and in, in, in demand. Uh, classics, the original classics were like that. They came out, they were super hot. And then uh, as they... Oh, God, I remember like 2008, 2009, so expensive. If you yeah. didn't buy them... Ugh. Yeah, if you, yeah. if you didn't buy them yep. uh, whenever they came out, then they uh, then they were doing and ins- going insane on, on eBay and, uh, and, and uh, other trading groups and everything. Um, and now some of them, you could barely give them away. And yeah. I, know, I know Megamus can attest to that. You know, it's like some of the chug stuff is like <laughs> here, you know, what ten bucks? <laughs> you know? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and that's just the way it is. And and you're gonna you're gonna have times as a collector, uh, you're going to question yourself. Uh, you're going to um, reevaluate what you're doing. Uh, you know, and if you have thoughts of getting out entirely. 
the number one thing you need to ask is why am I doing this? You know, or why am I thinking this? Uh, is it an external influence that is making me feel this way, uh, i.e. a girlfriend or a wife or a, a, a circle of friends that you're with. Uh, if that's the case, then do away with those people. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. <laughs> you know, to, to, to quote a meme here. Uh, but <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, but, you know, if it's an external influence, then 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 question yourself why why do I need to make them happy? This this hobby is for me. This is what makes me particularly happy, and it's what Sergio said. Um, you know, each ever each individual's collection is a representation of themselves and what they like, and they curate their collection uh, based on their uh, their own likes and dislikes, their uh, their experiences. Uh, their tastes and and toys, you know, uh, you know. I've in recent years I've leaned more toward the masterpiece aesthetic. Uh, at one point, I had the bulk of my collection was mostly G1. I had almost the entire run of U.S. release G1. Now my G1 collection fits would fit on a single shelf, you know. So that just goes to show you how your your collection, as you get older, will morph. Just like the toys themselves, they transform. Uh, your your collection will uh, may go from uh, you know thousands of figures, and in within the last ten years, I've had less than a hundred transformers to my name, and now I've got three to four hundred. You know, and I'm sure it may get down lower than that again, and who knows, it may get back up to a thousand again. I don't know, but I don't see it doing that because my current feeling is that I want to refocus and uh, get to a point where I am, I'm moving on. I'm 42 years old, and uh, you know, I, just, I don't want to get to the point where I'm 55, 60 years old looking at retirement and still having to go spend three, dollars $400 on a new Transformer. So you know, Don's age. <laughs> yeah, whenever I, whenever I get uh, needing a walker and uh, and you know scooter, uh, yeah, <laughs> need, need that scooter to to get around Walmart and everything. Uh, <laughs> go 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 in your homework. Right? I, I got the saddlebag ass that's hanging off the side. <laughs> I'm not saying that Don has saddlebag ass, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. You. I don't think we want to find out. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. You've been in Walmart. You've seen the saddlebags. Uh, yeah. uh, Unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, you, you, get, you get, get that old, you know, uh, whenever you, especially in the later years, whenever people start getting on a fixed income, uh, you know, you're starting getting a retirement check and everything. That's not exactly the time you want to start spending money or keep spending money on toys. And realistically, that's about another 20 years from me, you know, 20, 25 years from me. Uh, that is assuming that reti reti retirement still exists, uh, but that's a whole political thing that I don't want to get into. But please. Uh, but the thing is, is that I want to get to a point where I'm still young enough to enjoy getting out and traveling and doing things with the people that I care about. And... Uh, you know, there's there's things that I I would love to have as far as you know uh, vehicles and and homes and everything. I've rented my entire adult life. Uh, you know, I've never owned property, as it were. And eventually, I'd like to get to the point. You know, and I've never been blessed with with lots and lots of money. I've never had. Uh, you know, I've had a, a decent job. You know, that helped me pay the bills, and I'm I'm able to buy cool toys. Uh, but, you know, I don't have much left over after that. Um, you know, and there are people that are better at managing that money, and I'm not. You know, I'm not those people. I'm not one of those people. But I still enjoy my life. You know, I, I don't seek out to be the richest mf -er out there. Uh, but, you know, I just want to enjoy life and be happy. And, doing, and so far, I have been happy. Um but eventually, I do want to get out. I, I want to be able to nail 
uh, a nail in the wall and not have to answer to it whenever I move out of this place, you know. Uh, and you get to that point, you're like, oh, crap, I need money to do that. <laughs> and if I'm going and spending uh, $100, $200 on a toy every two weeks, then, you know, it's not going to help. Uh <laughs> But that's not, you know, and, and I don't want this episode to sit there and, and, and dissuade people and make you think, oh, well, you know, you just don't need to be in this hobby. Um, I'm just saying that, you know, and, and we've, we've said this many, many times on this, on the show in that you just need to be, uh, sure of what you want, focus what you want and stay with that focus. Um, and if it's making you happy at that time, then do it. Um, but don't let it overtake your life. Always maintain a level of perspective about your hobby, uh, in that you, you know, uh, your, your hobby does not rule you. You, you are in control of your hobby. Um, what, what, what's your guys thoughts? Um, I think you pretty much nailed it on the head. I can't really think of anything else. So, so yeah, you. I think you covered everything I was thinking too. <laughs> but you know, uh, and I know Rick had to hop off there, as 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 everybody uh, heard earlier. He was uh, his his daughter was having a meltdown. Uh, but I'm sure he would kind of echo these you. these thoughts. You know, you don't. I mean, if you have a huge collection and everything and you're happy with it, that's fine, you know, uh, and I would love, if I had the money and the space and the time to, to hunt down figures, I would still have a huge collection, uh, mm -hmm. and I would be still going strong, but I think that's something that makes, uh, going back to the point earlier, that everybody's collection is, is a personal uh, tribute to, to the way they live, um, you know, everybody's income level is different. Everybody's uh, in, uh, level of importance on the hobby is different. Um, and whatever you have is what you can afford, you know, basically. And what I can afford is behind me. You know, it's, it's, on, it's in these cases. And it makes me happy. Uh, you know, but at the same time, I don't want it to get to the point where it's the only thing that I deal with. If that makes any yeah. sense. Yep. I know the exact same way because it's pretty much the same with me and bowling to where I kind of like to focus on that too and not have one of my other hobbies like completely just dwell out another one that I have. And I just like to... If I get a figure, you know, every now and then, I wouldn't mind. But I really don't want to focus on one thing and completely forget about the other things that I really like, especially bowling. Because with the amount of time and money I put into that, I really want to forward my career in that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and, and as people ask you, you know, if, if as they meet you, it's like, well, what are you into? Well, number one for me, number one, Transformers. You know, I collect Transformers. Uh, number two, uh, I'm really into video games. You know, yep. uh, you know, uh, I'm really into wrestling. Uh, I love science fiction, especially Star Trek. You know, these are things that I'm I'm huge into. I could I could talk to you for hours about each and every one of these topics. But number one, first and foremost, my favorite thing is Transformers. You know, I have the logos emblazoned on my on my vehicle. I have, uh, you know, posters hanging up in my home, and I have a room dedicated to this this particular hobby. Yep. You know, uh, and I, and I think everybody is like that. You know, some people they might like Transformers, and they and then they deal with they they they're they're a greasehead. You know, they they love cars. Uh, some people. Uh, you know, they, they might love Transformers, but they love to go fishing. You know, fishing is really important to them. Um, you know, some people 
love Transformers. Some people love to go bowling. You know, uh, some people, uh, you know, they might like Transformers. They might like porn. Uh, you know, Sergio. Uh, <laughs> Sergio Brian Creed from the Hardcore Collectors. Shout out yeah, to I, him. I have to. I also have to spend one of my yearly subscriptions. <laughs> But uh, you know, I think we've uh, we've covered it and everything really well. You have any uh, any thoughts? Any closing thoughts, guys? Not really. Um, I think if you're having the same thoughts of downsizing or maybe even getting out of it, definitely talk to other collectors first. Oh, especially, yeah. especially collectors who have gone through it or in the process of going through it, just to get another another insight. You know, because if if you get perspective from a non-collector they're going to be like oh just sell it all sell that money it. You yeah get. look at all the money you can have yeah yeah but if yeah. you talk to another collector they're going to be like you know do you really want to do this you know it's like you spent so much time money effort and there's a lot of pieces with stories behind them you know it's like think about it oh, so that, that's that's and, what i would and that's uh, that's suggest. that's a small piece of advice too that you know having sold my childhood collection uh, back in my big massive sell-off back in 2006-ish, uh, there was some toys that, that I let go in that collection that, in retrospect, I really, really, really wish that I hadn't let go because of the sentimental value that some of those toys had. Uh, yep. You know, they represented moments in my childhood that I that I actually, at that time, had a tangible... Uh, memory attached to i could t i could hold that toy and i and, and every time i held that toy i remember it i remember that memory you know I, nothing can take the memory away from me but having a physical something about having a physical object that in, is relation to uh to something a, a part of your life and, and i'll an example i'll use is my generation one sandstorm uh, in when I was in sixth grade, I won. I lived in South Florida, and I won the Collier County, Florida sixth grade spelling bee championship. I beat out every student in, uh, in sixth grade in the entire county. And note that there was several large schools in this county. And here I was, this little hick boy from Kentucky that come down there and spelled Diffenbachia to win it. Uh, you know, and, uh, and I got some prize money and we went straight from the fairgrounds, uh, after I got my prize money. And the first thing I bought was generation one sandstorm. And I will never forget that, but I has still had generation one sandstorm complete up until back 2006, whenever I sold my original collection and it went with it. And at the time, it was one of those things. Is like you know, I was I was kind of like like Sergio was a couple weeks. You know, I, I just I just need to get rid of all this stuff. I don't need it. You know, and then after after I sold it, I was like, oh my god, what horrible thing have I done? What yeah. have I done? You know, and there's some point uh, some parts of my original childhood collection. I you know, it's like I wish I still had it, but at the same time fine you know it's gone uh but then there's others like that sandstorm that damn i really wish i hadn't done that i really wish i hadn't done that so you know if you're ever going to sell be sure and, and that's my advice to you uh, guys if you're selling things be sure that it doesn't have that kind of emotional attachment to it yep i learned that the hard way of the cybertron leader prime hmm. Yeah. That sucked. That was my favorite version of Optimus at the time, and I just let it go. Yep. And well, and sometimes it might not be that particular toy, but I mean, or that you know, you could always reobtain. It's like me; I could always reobtain a Generation One Sandstorm, but it yep. won't be my Generation One Sandstorm. The That's one that the actual one that I bought. The only problem I had with mine is that one of the wheels broke up. I knew that was unique because if it was that one, I wouldn't mind, you know, fixing it up. Yeah. Get it to the shape to where I originally got it and felt happiness with it. But, yeah. yeah, that was...
but uh, sure. but like I said, this is this was uh, going to be a very short episode. Uh, you know, we were time uh, we were limited on time for recording this week, uh, but I, I still wanted to get an episode out. Um, and uh, if you guys have got any thoughts, you know, if you're watching or listening to this episode, and you have any thoughts along these lines, uh, or have considered. Uh, getting out of the hobby or downsizing your collection, uh, join us on the Facebook group for TFYLP at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Uh, we're, we'll be happy to talk to you about it, you know, and, and give you ideas and pointers and, uh, and, and help lead you down the path that is best for you as a, as a hobbyist and a collector. Um, because there's lots of us that are either going through it or have been through it. Uh, that would be happy to talk to you about it. Um, also, check us out on Twitter, at TFYLP. Uh, and as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, if you love what we do uh, and love what we talk about here on the show, uh, go down there to the bottom of the screen and check out the link. It's uh, patreon.com slash TFYLP. Help us out uh, each month. It's not cheap to do this uh, this show. You know, like I said, we're constantly having to upgrade equipment. My computer is like seven years old, and I'm trying to get to a point where I can get a new one. <laughs> and, um, yep. you know, so and, and the new one, uh, I, I use Mac, and all my software is Mac. So everybody that says, oh, just get a, a PC, it's cheaper and everything. Well, when all your software is Mac, and you're used yeah. to using, when you're used to using that software, and you like that software, then stick with that software. But unfortunately, it's expensive as hell. <laughs> yep. um, so it's going to take me a while to get to that. But once we, once I'm, I'm there, we should, be, we should have some, some hardware, hardware to, to do this a little more, uh, or a little more smoothly, I should say. Uh, and that's what the Patreon helps us do. Uh, so uh, thank you to everybody that continues to help us do that. Uh, sorry, Rick couldn't finish out with us, but as uh, you know, we know life gets in the well, way. The apocalypse has ended. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and we totally understand. Not a not a not a big deal. Um, you know, uh, you know. Apologize for the for the noise, but at the same time, you know, everybody uh, everybody understands. Uh, Sergio, you have any closing thought for log off? No, that's all I had to say. Right. How about you, Jack? Mm-hmm. All Nothing right. Well, thank you all for joining us this week on TFYLP. We will see you next time. I am Daron Land with Sergio, Jack, and the departed Rick. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you next time on TFYLP. Good on, everybody. Nighty night. Well, for them. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>